Up until recently, if someone asked me which Android phone they should buy, my default response was the Pixel 7a. That all changes with the Pixel 8, but let's talk about that. Hey guys, I'm Ryan Thomas with Android Police and Google's Pixel line has been a pretty decent set of smartphones for a couple of years now, or at least since they released the 6 and 6 Pro. But there's always been a grey cloud looming over them, and that's their own Google Tensor system on chips. These are the brains and the connectivity behind the phones, which makes them pretty important. The problem is though, when it comes to the performance, the connectivity and the battery life, the equivalent chips from Qualcomm, Apple and Samsung absolutely smoked them. The Pixel 8 series is the best yet, with much needed revisions and refinements over previous models, specifically to Google's Tensor chips, and that makes more of a difference than just speeding up gaming performance and increasing benchmark scores. But we'll come back to this in a minute. The Pixel 8, like most other good smartphones out there, supports eSIM, which means you don't need a physical SIM card to get cellular connectivity. It's especially helpful when traveling abroad where you want a reliable connection, but you don't want to incur roaming charges. To use this feature, you enable Bluetooth, select your destination in the eSIM app from Olafly, or on the web page if you prefer, scan the QR code you receive and activate it as soon as you land. You get coverage in over 170 destinations with unlimited data plans, meaning you can stay connected without worrying about going over a limit. So you can make video calls, watch multimedia content and use your social media apps globally without any hassle, all accompanied by 24 seven support. For more information about this, check the link in the video description. Though physically there isn't a ginormous difference between the Pixel 8 and the Pixel 7 that came before it, Google has made some fairly significant changes that add up to create a more polished and easy to use package. We have rounder sides and back to aid ergonomics. We have a smaller footprint with about a 5% weight saving too, all despite keeping the IP68 water and dust resistance rating to keep your phone safe even in the heavy winter downpours we have in the UK, as well as a slightly larger battery too to keep the phone going for longer. Though because the non-pro model is glossy instead of the matte finish that you have on the larger model, the Pixel 8 is actually a lot easier to hold. It might not look as luxurious, but it's definitely the easier finish in my opinion. If you're not a huge fan of those giant ultra flagships that we've been seeing more of recently, then the Pixel 8 is a great shout. It's easy to use one-handed, it's easy to carry, and with these pint-sized powerhouses becoming rarer and rarer, the Pixel 8 presents pretty unique value here. Despite being on the small side in 2023, the 6.2-inch Full HD+, 120Hz, HDR10 OLED display is a real cracker of a screen. It's sharp, it's bright, it's responsive, it's a vibrant panel coated in a flat slab of Gorilla Glass Victus. It is more responsive than the 90Hz panel found in the Pixel 7. It's also far brighter with a claim to peak brightness of 2000 nits in HDR and 1400 nits when it detects bright sunlight. Though I enjoyed playing games and watching YouTube videos on this thing, despite its not huge form factor. You are giving up some battery capacity as a result of the smaller size, so the Pixel 8 might not be a two-day phone for most people, but I wouldn't count it out of easily delivering a full day of usage. The 4,575mAh battery meant that this phone lasted me about a day and a half, sometimes lasting me two days. Those days were particularly slow for me, and I wasn't on my phone really at all but those are the kinds of days that I often have, so I wouldn't count this out being a two-day phone for some people. For most though, it will easily be a day worth of charge. All of that is really to say the Tensor G3 processor was efficient enough to deliver shockingly good battery life for a phone of this size. And as a bonus, Google has upped the wired charging speed from 20 watts to 27 watts with a compatible brick. It's not in the box, I know, it's annoying. Though 18 watt wireless charging is available if you fancy it with the correct pixel stand. In fact, the Tensor G3 is a big step up from the previous generation G2. Not only does it deliver great battery life, but it has good performance across the board. It's significantly better than with the Pixel 7. 3D gaming is viable on the Pixel 8. It's not as smooth an experience as you might get with a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 or Apple A15 Pro, but it's definitely gonna be good enough for those who aren't gaming competitively and I quite enjoyed gaming on the Pixel 8. Outside of games, it delivers good performance for your everyday tasks. 
I found the eight gigabytes of memory to hold applications really well. It feels like it's rarer these days for a background app to close when you open another one, especially compared to the previous generation devices. For most people, for the person looking to buy an Android phone, the Pixel 8 will do everything you need from a performance and battery life standpoint. But it's not the hardware that will draw most people to the Pixel line. Google has been marketing its phones, at least over here in the West, with a focus on its software, because it makes these phones, to a non-tech savvy person, look kind of magic. And these magic features aren't just gimmicks either, they are useful tools. Take Magic Eraser for example, for removing items and images you don't want. No need to install and learn Photoshop, just do it right on your phone by circling it in the app. Audio Eraser is another big one for removing background noise, and then you have Top Shot, which allows you to get the correct facial expression that you want in portrait, especially useful in sort of group photos where not everyone might be fully aligned. Sometimes they don't hit the mark, but more often than not they do, and they turn a good smartphone into a really useful one. The Pixel 8 runs Android 14 and will get supported through software updates for another seven years, taking it to 2030, which means if you're the sort to hold on to your phone for a few years, you won't be left behind with security patches. This is a big reason to pick up a Pixel and why it has become my default recommendation. Speaking of recommendations, I always get asked which phone has the best camera, and when it comes to the main sensor, this might be up there as it's the same camera hardware found in the 8 Pro. Though it's not as versatile with the lesser 12 megapixel ultra wide and no telephoto to speak of, the main camera is capable of capturing some decent natural background blur on top of its very natural colour and contrast profile. Its 50 megapixel main camera bins images down to 12 and a half megapixel files, which is absolutely nothing to sniff at. That is far more than 4K in resolution. And the photos look sharp, they have plenty of dynamic range, but they also feature plenty of detail without lifting the shadows so far that they look fake. There is a small amount of HDR blooming that keen eyes might be able to pick out, but it is minimized compared to lesser systems, and images do come out looking very natural and lifelike, perhaps at the expense of crazy vivid colors or OTT sharpening. The Pixel 8 series does a fantastic job of mimicking white balance and color temperature, and the Pixel 8 is a fantastic option for those who want to capture what you see with your eyes. The ultra-wide camera is only 12 megapixels and isn't as capable when it comes to sharpness, detail retrieval or low light performance compared to the main, but can still capture good looking images and it still gives you that larger field of view when stepping backwards isn't an option or if you want a more dynamic shot. The Pixel 8 does a fine job when it comes to its computational photography modes. It sells its portrait effects very, very well with a smooth focus roll off whether you're capturing people or objects. Night Sight does a great job of capturing detail in low light scenarios with my one criticism really being that it sometimes lifts the black levels too much to give an almost unnatural amount of detail which can create a more washed out looking image. It just looks a little bit off but it doesn't happen every single time. And you can adjust this when taking the shot if you fancy it. Though this system is probably capable of it, Google has chosen to leave out its pro camera controls for manual tweaking before taking the shot and is also going to be leaving out video night sight, both of which modes will be available or are available for the 8 Pro. It artificially separates these two more than just the hardware and I don't really like that. As a total camera package though, I would call it unbeatable for a point and shoot smartphone system at this price point. You can pick up phones that have longer reaching zooms and wider field of view ultra wides, but you're not going to be getting that reliable point and shoot system that you get with a Pixel. Speaking of which, while 699 used to be what you'd pay for a full out and out flagship back in the day, it's a far cry from what you would pay for that stuff now. It might not be a budget pick by any means, it's $700, but the Pixel 8 is a great value pick when you consider what you're getting. Seven years of updates, a terrific screen, brilliant cameras, good performance and battery life, and a rarer, smallish form factor that fits most people's hands just fine. There are a few things I don't like. For one, there's still a chin on the bottom of the display. It's only small, but it's, it's not cohesive. 
There's also the fact you don't get any form of telephoto, not even a two times, though Super Res Zoom is pretty good. And the $100 price hike over the last generation is an unwelcome change. Not to mention those omissions that Google has made with this one compared to the Pro. I don't like that either. That said, I can live with these slight setbacks because the rest of the phone is just right. The Pixel 8 is much improved compared to its predecessor and has become the default smartphone for those wanting a quality Android handset. Let me know in the comments if you're looking to pick up this generation of Pixel. I really like the 8 series and it excites me to see what Google has in store for its 8A likely coming next year. You guys already know I like the A series of smartphones. They provide terrific value and a mega camera on a budget. Thank you all so much for watching. Hit like if you enjoyed today's content and subscribe to never miss an upload. I've been Ryan Thomas with Android Police and I'll catch you later. Cheers.